Dr. Siti Zahra Ishak, Director General of the Malaysian Institute of Road Safety Research, MyROS. Yang berbahagia Datuk Suri Singh, Chairman of MyROS. Mr. David Cliff, CEO of Global Road Safety Partnership. Your Excellencies, Datuk Datuk, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, I'm very pleased to be here today for the 2019 Asia Pacific Road Safety Seminar here in Kuala Lumpur. First of all, let me welcome all of you, in particularly our friends from uh, other countries, for our international participants. Very warm welcome to all, to all of you, to Malaysia. Selamat datang ke Malaysia. I also wish to thank the Global Road Safety Partnership for hosting this event with the support from the Malaysian Institute of Road Safety Research, MIROS, and the New Car Assessment Program for Southeast Asian countries, or ASEAN and CAP. The government of Malaysia is totally committed to ensure the safety of all road users in the country. The recorded number of road deaths worldwide, including in Malaysia and the Southeast Asia, is certainly a major concern for us all. With one person dying globally every 24 seconds from traffic-related incidents, road fatalities and serious injuries are a crisis of our own making. Every life loss on the road creates a chilling ripple effect that impacts families, communities and the country as a whole. However, in Malaysia, the present government is aware that we now have the solutions at our disposal to address this unacceptable lose of life. Therefore, I'm very heartened to see participants at this important event today so that we may share ideas and approaches to save life on our roads. Ladies and gentlemen, as the leading cause of death of young people around the world, road crashes steal the future of our children each and every day. It is incumbent on us, adults, to protect our children and to nurture them. The Malaysian government believes that stopping fatal crashes must remain our priority to guarantee children throughout the region and the world will, lo will, long, will live long, health healthy life in harmony with a safe transportation system. Unfortunately, the Southeast Asian region has registered a higher road traffic death in comparison with other regions in the world. As our country is increasingly urbanized, we must continue to factor road safety into our resilience agenda. As such, the implementation of evidence-based laws on behavioral risk factors, the construction of safe roads, and greater availability of vehicles that meet international safety guidelines are critical in ensuring we provide safe systems of transportation moving forward. In addressing the situation in Malaysia, the Ministry of Transport has announced several measures to elevate road safety standards in the country. This manifestation is in line with the government's commitment as mandated in the Road Safety Plan of Malaysia 2014 to 2020, with the aim to stabilize and further reducing the expected fatality rate of road crashes by 50% in 2020. On the recent development for road safety in Malaysia, the Ministry of Transport has decided that the use of child car seats will be mandatory for all private cars starting from next year. This is a major commitment, and we know that this discussion has been ongoing for many years. So last year, I think we decided that we have to start somewhere, and we have decided by 1st of January 2020, we must push this agenda forward. And we want, to, we want to make it compulsory for this implementation of child uh, seat in our cars. Under the regulation which is in line with the United Nations Regulation 44, the restraining device must be provided for children traveling in power-driven vehicles such as car. In accordance with this ruling, the government will be taking reasonable steps to make sure child car seats are affordable to every, day, to every car owner in the country. Beginning next year, the government will also reward prudent road users with a lower insurance premium or additional discounts on their no-claim bonus. This is something that we think that we must provide characteristic approaches. We can't just be penalizing 
or making it compulsory. But at the same time, we must give some incentive for prudent root users. As such, we have decided a mechanism, a very simple mechanism, using our data integration. Whoever car users or car owners who does not have a traffic ticket or traffic summons for the past 12 months, then we are working together with insurance companies to provide them with additional discount to their insurance premium. This is a carrot that we want to entice people to behave on the route. We believe that just by penalizing people is not enough. Some people will still do it. But if we have more carrots and more incentive to be given to route users, and politically, this is more easier for me to implement than a stick. Because whenever I carry a stick, people will, of course, react negatively. But the moment we give carrot, everybody will clap their hands. So we think that incentive is always better approach than uh, penalizing people. So we hope that <laughs> we hope we hope that this innovative policy can help in terms of changing behaviors of our public. Our message is very simple: behave yourself on the road, and you will be rewarded. That is a simple message that we want to send to all road users in the country. And for the insurance companies, I, I, I impress upon them. I said it's better for you to give discount because if you give discounts and you can encourage and to create better driving habits on the road, then hopefully we can see a reduction in terms of road accidents. With reduction of road accidents, you will pay out less in terms of your coverage. So the insurance company can make more money. So that is a win-win situation that we hope that we can create. So we are trying out this policy next year. We hope that within a year or two, we can share with all of you, with all other countries, how this policy work out. Hopefully that it will be positive. So let's uh, uh, work together. And we hope that as far as in the Malaysian uh, car industry is concerned, we hope that all the relevant agencies, together with insurance companies, uh, spearheaded by the Ministry of Transport, we hope that everyone can work together and support this initiative for us to create a better driving culture in our country. Beginning for, for this initiative, of course, the Ministry of Transport will integrate information and data from the police and the road transport department on people with exemplary records on the road and vice versa. Such a step is taken to reduce road accidents and to create a safer environment for all drivers in Malaysia. Aside from that, it will also serve as a motivation for road users to follow traffic laws and regulations and to help reduce the high cost of living. Those who do not abide by the law will, however, be penalized. At the same time, the government is also focusing on long-term efforts to ensure that all roads and highways in the country meet international safety standards and operating capacity so that accidents can be reduced. One of these efforts is through the newly launched Malaysia Road Assessment Programme or MyRap, which is established following the success of IRAP Malaysia program launched in 2016. Through this program, high-risk routes where a large number of users are killed or seriously injured are inspected and affordable programs of safety engineering are identified. MyRap will then highlight improvement that could be made to these routes to reduce the probability of crashes and to make those that place are survivable. To date, MyRap has inspected over 11,000 kilometers of Malaysia's expressways, highways, federal routes, and state routes, including in Sabah and Sarawak. Consequently, more than 95% assessed stretches of four Malaysian expressway networks have been awarded three-star ratings or higher for safety under the program. In addition, more than 500 locations on the expressways have been improved with the risk of crashes significantly reduced. I wish to take this opportunity to congratulate Maros for being entrusted once again by IRAP Global to carry out the program. Congratulations, Maros, and we hope that you can do better in the coming years. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Transport also recognizes the role of safer cars in elevating the risk of crashes and reducing the likelihood of serious injuries sustained by car occupants involved in road crashes. Here, safer cars means cars that have been rated for their safety design, 
in crashworthiness and crash compatibility and awarded four or five star safety rating by ASEAN and CAP. In fact, next year, with the support from the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, passenger vehicles being displayed in all sales and showroom centres, hypermarkets, etc., are compelled to present their respective safety rating as endorsed by ASEAN and CAP. This ruling is introduced to educate the public about the labelling system and safety rating based on the safety features of the vehicle they own. Through the efforts of both Myros and ASEAN and CAP, the Government of Malaysia has also decided that all new models of passenger cars sold in the country must be equipped with Electronic Stability Control, or ESC. With Malaysia's tropical climate and torrential rain, ESC has the potential to curb road accidents involving passenger vehicles on slippery roads. This move is also in line with the findings by the police that more than 45% of fatal accidents in Malaysia are caused by loss of vehicle control. Finally, in an effort to provide early exposure to road safety, the Ministry of Transport through the Road Safety Department, JKJR, collaboration, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, has introduced road safety education, starting from kindergarten level up to Form 3 students at the National Secondary School. The Road Safety Education Initiative aims to provide basic knowledge and skills in road safety to produce future generation of prudent Malaysian road users. In addition, children will be able to understand, appreciate and practice measures to protect their personal safety and respect the rights of other road users. However, it has to be said that all the efforts made by the government will only be fruitful if Malaysians display good manners and patience on the road. Comply with the stipulated speed limit. Consistently wear seat belts for car occupants and proper helmets for motorcyclists. Ladies and gentlemen, I strongly applaud the focus on the role of leadership in this seminar. With the strong integration and road safety within the Sustainable Development Goals and the ASEAN Transport Strategic Plan, we must continue to challenge the status, the status quo and work together to find innovative and creative solutions that we know will have the greatest impact in saving life. Let me again congratulate and thank the Global Road Safety Partnership for holding this important regional event and for working with Myros and ASEAN NCAP to develop an exciting agenda that will provoke new ideas and create strong partnerships to move forward the road safety agenda in Asia and the Pacific. You have had a day of immersive and engaging presentations and workshops covering a variety of important topics and facilitating discussions and ideas today. And I'm sure that it will be just as engaging for tomorrow. I'm sure many of you who are passionate about road safety, many come from afar to Kuala Lumpur to discuss about this agenda. I think it's a very good platform for all of you to share your experience, to share your expertise, exchange of ideas. And I think that every country has different type of situation. And I'm sure with the exchange of ideas and uh, views, you can always adopt that particular idea back home in your country, taking into consideration your respective condition in your own country. I think Malaysia is very pleased to host this event. And as far as I'm concerned as the Transport Minister, road safety has always been my top priority. When I took over as the Minister of Transport in May last year, I've mentioned that one of my top priorities as the Minister of Transport is to improve road safety in the country. And this will remain as my top priority. I personally can feel the pain of any members of the family who lose a member of their families in road accidents. Me personally, myself, I lost my elder brother at the age of four years old when he was killed in a motorcycle accident about 38 years ago. So I know that, personally, I know that if you lost a family member in a road accident, the trauma that you have to go through, you have to, you have to go through, is tremendous. My family gone through many years of traumatic experience. So I do not want another family to feel the same. So hopefully that we can do something. I mean, we are in a position of authority. We are in the government. Hopefully that all of us can work together, that we can improve road safety in our country and in the whole world. So hopefully that what we are doing today is to save life. 
So I think it's a very noble work that all of you are doing. Hopefully that all of you will continue your passion to continue your good work and let make this world safer for everyone. On the final note, we also look forward to welcoming you at Myros tomorrow during your site visit and are equally thrilled to showcase our laboratories and facilities to you so that you may see the strong and diverse Malaysia is, taki is taking to address road safety. I hope that we can continue to champion road safety as our top agenda and hopefully that the whole region can work together and make road safety as a reality and to make sure that our roads are safe for everyone. With that, thank you very much and I would like to launch the 2019 Asia Pacific, Asia Pacific Road Safety Seminar. Thank you very much.